Now, I'm not going to say the curse is completely lifted, just like the one that Maleficent laid on Snow White. It runs pretty deep. Generally, adaptations of video games into TV series and movies uh, does not go very smoothly. Either talking from a general entertainment standpoint, or at least for the video game purists that actually played the original titles, which the core content is based on, it sways so far off the beaten path that the path is no longer a path. It's it's a dot. I'm happy to say that the Super Mario Brothers movie was not only entertaining, but uh, it was actually pretty good. The last video Video game movie I reviewed on the channel was Uncharted, where everything felt watered down, like it was the diet, the Coke light version. This feels like a diet version of the Uncharted games. Everything the Uncharted movie does or tries to do, attempts to do, is done better in the actual video game series that it is based on. Well said, Kevin, from the past. That movie was a disaster. I actually just rewatched it again on Netflix for a little bit of background noise, explosions while I do the dishes and whatnot. I still had the same complaints. Now, Charlie mentioned on his review on the moist meter that he didn't understand all these 80s pop songs they're simply out of place, and the soundtrack should have been remixed or revamped original Super Mario songs, which I totally and utterly agree with. However, those 80s rock songs were handpicked to really tickle the nostalgia vein of all the men and women that were in the theater, because looking around the theater, a lot of the parents that were bringing their kids to come see this movie, and yeah, it was a lot of families seeing the movie other than my girlfriend and I, the studio wanted a hot shot of nostalgia directly to the veins of these men and women that grew up with the original Super Mario and NES. Well, actually, it was in arcades before it was in home consoles, then Nintendo Entertainment System. You didn't come here for a retro gaming lesson, you came here for a review of this movie, which is actually pretty damn good, surprisingly enough. My apologies, the trailer isn't playing in the background. I used a bunch of B-roll footage of the trailer of the show, but of course that popped in the old copyright infringement systems on Google's end and whatnot. Not a strike or anything, but really didn't add that much context to what I'm talking about anyway. If you want, you can just go look up Illumination Studios YouTube channel and they have their trailer over there. Instead, all the places in the video where I have B-roll of the actual authorized trailer of the video, you're just gonna see some gameplay footage, so. Yeah. The story is really nothing to write home about, as no Mario video game really is. You're in the Mushroom Kingdom. Somebody's got to get kidnapped. However, this time it's not Peach's Peach. It is going to be Luigi. Kind of shitty to separate the brothers, considering, well, they work phenomenally together. They're they're a duo. They're, they're brothers. What made me the happiest seeing this movie was all the little Nintendo Easter eggs that were slid deep inside the movie. For example, there's a substantial part played by Donkey Kong. There's a short little cameo from Diddy Kong. There's a pretty long fight scene between Donkey Kong and Mario that looks like it was taken directly out of Smash Brothers. Then, of course, everyone's talking about the Mario Kart race on Rainbow Road, which is a pretty sick scene, although I thought they would have done a little bit more with the power-ups. I thought maybe they would have been throwing shells and banana peels and whatnot. There really wasn't, like, any of that going on, but it was still cool as hell. At one little complaint with actually all the vehicles, anytime they're on a cart or a motorcycle, Peach rides a little motorbike, they took the sound clips, the sound effects, directly from some of the Fast and the Furious movies, some of the original sound clips from Fast and the Furious, and put those on the, the carts, which I thought was kind of weird. I do think the soundtrack would have been a whole hell of a lot better if they would have remained consistent with the original game and maybe revamped with a little bit of, uh, you know, dubstep or electronic. Take the original game soundtrack and then bring that into the modern era. They did that a little bit with a couple of sections, but again, there was a lot of 80s and early 90s rock, uh, which I understand is there to tickle the nostalgia boner or bone of the men and women that played the original game and are just super hyped to bring their kids to the theater that probably have no idea what the hell they're watching. They're like, oh, cool, uh, Italian plumber. Dope. Moving right on to the voice acting. In the final presentation, it was actually quite good. I closed my eyes. It didn't even sound like Chris Pratt. I would say the best performance voice acting wise is going to be Jack Black, which really isn't a surprise because he really gives it his all. I didn't have any complaints with the pacing. I got up to take a tinkle once. Luckily, the bathroom was directly on the other side of the theater and I could hear action popping off even when I was taking a squeege. So, you know, consistent action there, good pacing. And a quick note that needs mention, there really isn't any fleshing out of backstories of characters or character building or even really major introductions, proper handshake and introductions. Hey, this is Mario. Hey, this is Toad. Well, they do mention, hey, I'm Toad. Hi, I'm Mario. It's a me, a Mario. Do so you know who you're looking at? But these characters have been around for like three decades. You've, you've heard of them once or twice. And again, the story isn't so deep with plot twists that's going to snap your ankles to where you need to know the motivations of all the characters or anything like that. Two plumbers from Brooklyn get sucked into a pipe, save the Mushroom Kingdom and get Peach's Peach off of Bowser's lap. 
crap. Why reinvent the wheel if she rolls so damn smooth? Nintendo. When I go to the movie theater, I go there to be entertained, have a couple of belly laughs, and I did. It was funny. It was entertaining. I had no complaints whatsoever. Probably isn't my most articulate movie review, but I just wanted to get my thoughts, uh, you know, hot off the press, off the noggin, because I just saw this movie last night in theaters. Uh, it's pretty damn good, which is surprising for me to say, considering, again, video game TV shows and movies are, are generally a skid mark that the gaming community isn't wiping. The budget was a nice even hundred million US dollars. Just for a little comparison piece, the Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993 had a budget of $48 million, which is so much higher than I would have ever assumed that movie had. I thought it had a budget of like $6. If you have not seen this movie, this original, where's that? Can I, can I pull this up? Pure cringe factor. You should probably watch it. Here's your voice actors. Good, 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 great, good, good, great, good. You call Seth Rogen's performance great? Uh, yeah, Donkey Kong really simply written and whatnot, but the little Seth Rogen goofy laugh. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's in there. It actually worked pretty good with DK. I think he actually fit the DK part, but no complaints in the voice acting department whatsoever. Visually, this is a very impressive film. It had a budget of $100 million. I do think that was allocated quite well as the CGI was very impressive. Actually, all the action sequences were very entertaining. You've got the honest, unlocked thoughts of an average man, but how did this movie pop off in the box office? How many ducats did it rake in for the studio? That's a great question. It did great, blowing past expectations, 377 million in the box office, and around 204.6 mil in domestic sales between Wednesday and Sunday. So cool, not that I care about going with the consensus of everyone else or going with the ebb and flow of everyone else's opinion, but it seems like I'm on board. Um, Yeah, it, it, this movie, it's solid. You should, you should see it. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.